Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. So in this video, we are taking a closer look onto the Cine Zooms from DZO, the DZO Picture Zooms, and they come with a really somewhat affordable price for these lenses. But if these lenses are really worth the price and if they also come with some downsize due to the fairly low price, we're gonna find out in this video coming up. Hi guys, my name is Paul, I'm a German filmmaker and this channel is all about filmmaking gear reviews but also DaVinci Resolve tutorials. So if that's something that you're interested in, consider subscribe, I would really appreciate that. Thank you. So first of all, thanks to Tio, uh, he rent or he gave this, uh, this zoom optics to me because he's owning them and uh, I just uh, gave him a call and asked, hey, uh, I want to test them out and I'm searching for a cine zoom set for my Komodo and he was uh, so kind to give them to me for a day for testing and I've shot a bunch of test sequences with my red Komodo because I'm already on a hunt as I've said for a nice pair of cine zooms and these ones are specifically designed for Super 35 so meaning we have here a 20 millimeter to 55 and a 50 millimeter to 125 which is equivalent to full frame 70 to 7 uh, 24 to 24 to 70 and uh, 70 to 200 so all the zoom or all the focal lengths that you actually need uh, in a day-to-day -day use so really handy about that and also as i've said it's already really a real cine optics so meaning that they have a t-stop in, 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 instead of a, an f-stop and they are all the way wide open to t2.9 so fairly wide open which is really great and also that also already leads me to the handling and overall design i really like how these dzo picture zooms really look they look really nice and not uh, like these normal broadcast zooms that you see they just look ugly <laughs> I think and these ones look really really cool I think and also in terms of build quality they are really high quality made uh, nothing feels cheap everything feels really rock solid and also if you adjusting the aperture uh, which is stepless of course or the zoom or the focus it has a really smooth rotation which is really nice and you already have the focus gears uh, or the, the gears you have already pre-installed so you can easily attach a follow focus or something like that so that works really nice they also come in uh, when you buy the bundle you get an ef mount and a pl mount and you can swap them yourself so that's really nice but the biggest downside for me when I'm talking about handling and overall build quality is the weight. Guys, I'm not joking, but uh, one of these lenses is almost weighing like 2 kilos, so it's 1.8 kilo. Don't know what it is in pounds because I'm here in Germany and I don't know anything about pounds. But uh, as I've said, these ones are really, really heavy. And because of the, the weight, you actually really need a support system, so some kind of rods and support, uh, because otherwise it is really heavy on the mount, because these ones are fairly big, and yeah, I use them handheld all the time, and yeah, that was not so easy. And also, if I would have used an easy rig or something like that, my whole rig would have been really front heavy because of these heavy lenses so you need to consider that but let's talk about the most important thing and that's the image quality right so as i've said i was shooting on the komodo in 6k so i was really surprised how is the imagery look like and uh, do they are really made for these kind of high resolutions and I really like the sharpness uh, of the image. So we have plenty of detail there. It looks really, really nice. And uh, yeah, overall, I really like the look of this, yeah, of, of this picture zooms. And therefore, uh, I also didn't notice too much. So they have some kind of focus breathing, but it's not too strong, I would say. So fairly acceptable, I would say. So that's great. But I've noticed something and that's about the bokeh or actually you call it bokeh. <laughs> 
And uh, for that to know, you have to understand that the Komodo is a little bit wider than traditional Super 35. So traditional Super 35 is normally 1.5x crop and a Komodo has 1.3x crop, but it covers that, so that's really nice. But I was noticing, uh, if you look to the edges, you get like this swirly bokeh, uh, or Boca, whatsoever, and that really remind me of the Helios 44 uh, primes. They have also this kind of crazy Boca. I personally like that, but it's obviously something that you should have to keep in mind because this doesn't look really uh, clinical or clean or something like that. So, and therefore, I was also testing hey, uh, maybe let's go to uh, normal Super 35 size. So, I was cropping into 5k onto the sensor, and then the Komodo has like a 1.5x crop. And then uh, it's almost not uh, notice noticeable anymore. If you look to the edges, you still can see it a little bit, but I think it's not really noticeable. So therefore that's great. And therefore uh, the lens that you choose for your project is really, um, you really have to consider, for example, if I'm shooting some interviews or something like that, and I want to have a clean, sharp look, then I mostly, uh, picked my Sigma primes because they give me this awesome look and for that specific scenario I probably wouldn't use these lenses in that case. But overall the Boca is really nice. Uh, another downside that I found are the chromatic aberration uh, that you have. So I think you have really strong chromatic aberrations uh, more than I personally would have liked to but you get almost rid of them if you stop down to T5.6 or something like that but wide open is fairly strong and also compared to the very popular Sigma 18 to 35 you also see uh, that the um, yeah that this is also more exaggerated here on the DZO picture zooms. So let's sum it up. So for 5K, uh, this bundle is somewhat affordable for, uh, for this price, but it's a, a real cine set, as I've already said. And, but yeah, for me personally, I wouldn't pick them because mainly because of the weight, because almost two kilo for one lens is really heavy. And I personally like to shoot a lot of my stuff handheld. And for that reason alone, uh, it's really not practical for me because I was using, when I shot these tests, I, I was using it handheld and I was uh, holding with one hand the side grip of my Komodo and then the other arm underneath the, the lens and was feeling like um, I was carrying a big gun or something like that. So not really that nice for me personally, but other than that, uh, these lenses are really great. The images that they produce are great. Um, look a little bit warm, but nothing to worry about, I think. So I really like them. The only fact that I'm not considering them anymore is because of the weight. And therefore I'm looking into the Fujinon MK whatsoever. So they have the same zoom range, but I think they're about half the weight. So we'll check on that and yeah, maybe if you're interested in that, consider subscribe. If you have any further questions, just drop them down in the comments below and I'm gonna see you in my very next video. Cheers guys!